The Analyzer tool in InterSystems Iris Business Intelligence offers a straightforward and intuitive way to create pivot tables from data and cubes. With these pivot tables, you can create dashboards or gather information to create reports. To find this tool, go to the InterSystems Iris Management Portal and click Analytics, then Analyzer. Open an existing cube by clicking the cube icon on the left side of the screen. Note that your selected cube is shown below the icon. The cubes used by the analyzer are created in the architect. In this example, we will use data from the Samples BI dataset. Three main areas compose the analyzer pane. On the left is the model content area, where the content of the subject areas is listed in expandable folders. The pivot builder is at the top of the screen. You can drag and drop items here from the model content area as rows, columns, measures, or filters. Finally, the pivot preview area at the bottom shows how your pivot table will display in the dashboard. Let's take a closer look at the model content area. Under the measures folder is a list with standard measures obtained directly from the cube and calculated measures represented by a flask icon. You can also navigate through the levels of a dimension clicking the arrows to expand the folders. Some dimensions also contain properties which appear in blue with a different icon. Pivot tables are a combination of dimensions and measurements arranged in a way that makes it easy to understand the data. To create a pivot table, first drag and drop a dimension to the rows section of the pivot builder. Then drag one of the measures in the model content area to the measures section of the pivot builder. You can also add a measure by double clicking its name in the model content area. The analyzer executes queries automatically, allowing you to easily obtain information from cubes without MDX knowledge. The MDX query is created automatically when you drag and drop dimensions, measures, and filters to the pivot builder. You can see the current MDX query if you click on the sketchbook icon. Note that the MDX query will change if you add or subtract a component. Now let's take a look at the process for modifying the pivot tables and adding or removing information as needed. A total row is commonly added to pivot tables. To do this, click the wrench icon to open the pivot options. In the Summary section, select the checkbox next to Sum and click OK. Note all values were summed, but the averages are not correct, since they cannot be calculated as a sum. Since this table includes a mix of columns that require totals and averages, we need to use another method. Delete the Summary row by returning to Pivot Options and unselecting the checkbox next to Sum. Now add the item All Patients under Dimensions, which refers to all records in the base class. With this simple action, the summary row now shows both the sum and average. Note that any dimension can potentially include an all members item. Other dimensions can be displayed and calculated in the same way. For example, you can add diagnoses to your rows in the pivot builder. Then drag the all patients item under the age D dimension to rows. The total and averages now display for each diagnosis. Some dimensions contain a hierarchy of levels that you can drill up and down through. A common example that illustrates this hierarchy is the date dimension. In this example, we can drill down from the decade of the 1920s to the year 1925, then to Q3 and July. If you want to drill up, click the arrow. Or click X in the drill down menu to remove a drill level. You can also drill down by dragging a level onto a different dimension in the preview area. For example, we can add the region to the year 2021. Note how the original number, in this case 1,373, is still in the total, even with the addition of the city. The analyzer allows you to review the lowest level data, or the data source itself, for the selected cell or cells. To see how this works, select a cell and click the binoculars icon in the menu above the pivot builder. The data displayed includes the first 100 items. Use the arrow at the bottom to continue to the next page. In this example, there are seven pages of results. To go back to the pivot table, click the display table button above the pivot builder, which looks like a bulleted list. To display another list, click the wrench icon above the pivot builder to open the pivot options menu and select a listing from the drop-down menu. Clicking the binoculars again at the top of the pivot builder will display the list. 
Another way to find a different list is by selecting the detailed listings in the model content area to show all the available listings. Filters are essential for delimiting the data that you display. In the analyzer, just drag and drop the required filter to the pivot builder, which can be a dimension or measure. In this example, we have a table displaying favorite colors and add a filter for red. The table now displays the total based upon this filter under the heading All. Now we will add the age group level to the rows and show the total by opening the Pivot Options menu and selecting Sum. Notice that the total number of results based on this filter persists even after adding additional dimensions. To add filters quickly, drag a dimension to the separator bar. From there you can select ranges, search for values to include or exclude, or clear the filter. You can temporarily disable a filter by simply selecting the checkbox next to the filter name. To add an advanced filter, or a filter for a measure, select the gear icon in the Filters section and click Add Condition, then select an item from the Values drop-down menu. In this example, we chose Measure.TestScore. Next, click the operator, in this case, less than or equal to, and add a numerical value. The table will now display test scores less than or equal to 50. Finally, we can save our pivot table by clicking Save. Then select an existing folder or create a new one and name your pivot. At this point, you can either make the pivot public or lock it if you do not wish to allow changes on it. You can also add a description and keyword for easy searching. Once you are done, click OK. To open an existing pivot, click Open, then select your folder and your pivot. If you wish to delete a pivot, simply open it and click Delete. A message will appear to confirm the deletion. As you see, Intersystems Iris BI provides you a powerful tool to work with data from cubes. To learn more about working with cubes, watch the video Introduction to Cubes and in Business Intelligence on the Intersystems Learning site.